Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Kabir Considers. In this video, I'm going to react to a F-15 landing with one wing. I wouldn't have thought this is possible. Like there's no way. How, how would you stabilize, you know, the fuselage? How would you stop it from just going and then just... So yeah, like I'm very curious to understand, you know, how the pilot achieved this, you know, did they did it have external help maybe did it did another plane fly and kind of help keep it you know in check yeah i'm very curious about this story so let's do it this footage shows a terrifying accident from may of 1983. it's an israeli f-15d flying above the negev desert with only one wing Whoa. the aircraft's pilot ziv nadivi had just recovered the jet from a tight spiral after colliding with an A-4 Skyhawk and was being ordered to eject. With a runway almost in sight only 10 miles away, however, Nadivi lit his afterburners and headed to attempt a most unconventional landing. <laughs> the aircraft. The aircraft involved in the incident was a McDonnell Douglas F-15D Eagle and a Douglas A-4 Skyhawk, both owned by the Israeli Air Force. Ironically, the F-15 Eagle was created, designed, and assembled in the United States. A sophisticated jet, it's a twin-engine tactical fighter plane designed to fly in all weather conditions. In the late 60s, the U.S. Air Force reviewed several proposals for a fighter dedicated strictly to air superiority. Winning out, the F-15 wasn't initially conceived as an air superiority aircraft. In fact, the design included more, a secondary capability for ground attack. And I'm guessing the F-22, you know, kind of superseded, like uh, overtook the F-15, because I think the, F the F-22 is also an air superiority plane, right? Nevertheless, most operators ignored secondary abilities. Its maiden flight commenced in July 1972, entering service fully in 1976. It's considered one of the most successful fighter planes of the modern era. Since its introduction, models have been exported to American allies Israel and Japan and sold to Saudi Arabia. To date, the F-15 has achieved more than 100 victories collectively and without a single loss of life. Wow. Most successes are credited to the Israeli Air Force, however. The Eagle was first imagined during the early days of the Vietnam War, when the US Air Force and Navy competed to discover the next best tactical aircraft. The Air Force quickly adopted the F-15. Thanks to its weight-to-wing area ratio, the F-15 was highly maneuverable. Thanks to its high thrust-to-weight ratio, the Eagle could conduct tight turns without compromising airspeed. It climbed to 30,000 feet in just under 60 seconds. At some speeds, the aircraft could accelerate while traveling vertically. Wow. The dynamic thrust output of its engines was even higher than its combat weight and drag, which allowed the aircraft to accelerate without compromising speed. A key feature of the F-15 Eagle is a multi-mission avionics system with a heads-up display facilitating flight use. Other features include an internal guidance system, advanced flight instruments, radar, high-frequency communications, a tactical air navigation system, and several instrument landing system receivers. Is the F-15 still in use today? Like, or has, you know, the F-35 and the F-22 basically taken the workload away from it? Like, I would imagine it's still in use, but probably to a diminished degree a little bit. I'm talking about US military here. Amazingly, the plane also conducts electronic warfare to identify friends or foes and implement its own electronic countermeasures. In service, the F-15 totaled a record-breaking 104 kills with no losses as of February 2008. Over half of these were achieved by Israeli Air Force pilots. Furthermore, air superiority models A, B, C, and D have never fallen into enemy hands. Before the accident, the aircraft took down four enemy planes during the 1982 Lebanon War. On its second run, it took down a MiG-23 in Syria on November 19, 1985. The plane flown during the practice over the Negev was an F-15D, a two-seat training version, of which 92 were built between 1979 and 1985. The other plane involved was a Douglas A-4 Skyhawk, a single-seater subsonic light attack plane. Its delta wing and use of one turbojet engine made it notably lightweight, with a maximum takeoff weight of 24,500 pounds. It can fly up to 670 miles per hour. The incident. The accident took place on May 1st, 1983. The Israeli Air Force was carrying out a divergent air combat training session over the Negev region. 
an F-15D crashed into an A-4 Skyhawk after both planes approached each other too closely and their undersides collided. The Skyhawk plane caught on fire, the pilot immediately ejected. He was able to parachute to land safely. Whew, lucky. Ziv didn't even realize what had gone wrong at first. He simply felt a big push and saw the fireball caused by the exploding Skyhawk. He heard the radio communication informing the pilot had successfully ejected. The F-15 Eagle began rolling uncontrollably, its right wing dislocated about two feet from its root. Still, both crew members aboard the plane were oblivious. The leaking fuel streamed out of the wing, vaporizing at the wing attachment, which covered their view of the missing wing. Only after descending into a tight spiral did the pilots notice the missing key component. Imagine seeing that, like you're sort of looking at it. <laughs> Just... Ziv Nadivi gained control of the aircraft without realizing the full extent of the damage. He switched afterburners on, which at least halted the spin. The two crew members were ordered to eject, but opted instead to save the plane by landing it at the nearest airfield ten miles away. <laughs> Due to the lift from the fuselage, stabilators, and left wing, the jet remained stable. Nadivi diverted to Ramon Air Base. Suddenly, as he circled to land, the tail hook lowered and descended. The F-15 landed at 260 knots, twice the average speed to maintain lift during a standard landing. The tail hook was consequently destroyed. With high precision and a bit of luck, Nadivi was able to stop the plane only 20 feet from the airfield's barrier. Ooh. About his decision to land, Nadivi later asserted that he, quote, probably would have ejected if I knew what had happened. Uh. In fact, the pilots only learned of their severed wing after inspecting the aircraft upon landing. Crazy. A remarkable repair. The F-15 Eagle with the missing wing, labeled as the 106th Squadron's Marika Shakim, Hebrew for Sky Blazer, was sent to Tel Nof. At the Israeli Air Force Maintenance Unit, it underwent two months of repairs. Showing the F-15's extreme strength and reliability, the jet was soon restored entirely. Nice. It returned to normal service. Nice job. What a story. What a great story. Amazing ability by that pilot, you know, especially working under pressure. Even though he wasn't fully aware, he, I don't think he was actually aware at all of the missing wing. Just being able to, you know, understand that your plane is, you know, not operating properly, but being able to at least salvage the main components of it, the fuselage and everything else by landing it, you know, because he could have ejected, like he was told to eject, but I'm guessing he knew, or in his mind, he knew that he was capable of landing it. But yeah, fantastic story. The F-15 is obviously an amazing plane that's, uh, I think it's still being used. I'd love to know what it's being used for at the moment. Like how, how has its use changed and evolved over time, especially with newer planes coming and taking some of its workload away. But yeah, really, really fun video. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next one.